Moving right along, you know, in the Jewish tradition, there is the rite of passage. When uh, a boy reaches the age of 13, he has to, you know, go through the bar mitzvah. And there's a lot of um, folklore around it. And one of the most famous things is that they have to stand up on stage and say, I would like to thank my mother and my father for bringing me here today, for making this possible. So if earlier I thanked Dorit Dor for her role in creating uh, Checkpoint, which was the company where I started my career and that gave birth to this wonderful thing you see here in front of you today, then by <laughs> in that analogy, obviously the father would be Mr. Gil Shvei, the founder and CEO of Checkpoint. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and thank you for the introduction. And it's great to see so many Checkpoint uh, graduates uh, taking role in this industry and what we're doing. I started Checkpoint uh, 26 years ago, and my first struggle was to uh, convince people about. Uh, um, why is it not okay? was to uh, convince people about the potential of the internet. My first two or three years, people really liked my idea, but told me that internet is an academic thing, no commercial potential, won't, nothing will come out of it. And when we speak about the subject of cybersecurity today, it's hard to imagine how dependent we are on the internet and, um, and how much have changed in the landscape for internet security. For example, you can see some data here. In 2018, Checkpoint products blocked more than 100 million what we call unknown attacks, new attacks that weren't known before. Uh, I'll talk later about our threat cloud, the cloud that we have that uh, collects and actually analyzes many, many of the attacks or attempt attacks on the internet which analyzes 86 billion transactions every single day. Just to compare it, Google processes 6 billion searches every day. Um, so obviously we can see that we're doing a lot of work and things are uh, changing. How do, um, and things are changing. However, when we look at our data, we still see a lot of... Uh, uh, we, we still know that we have a big challenge ahead of us. It's not just the great work that we're doing. For example, if we look at the study by the World Economic Forum from January, it's called the Global Risk uh, Report. We can see that uh, cyber uh, attacks are amongst the top five. It's actually the number four threat vector that they have, which is a risk to, to humanity. And it's, by the way, the number one in terms of man-made risks. The top three ahead of it are all natural disasters, things that are not made by human beings. Uh, and the result is, by the way, we can see that uh, almost half the companies were hacked last year. We can see the statistics here. 46% of all companies were affected. And more than one-third of our data got lost and uh, leaked only last year. And that's, and that's a big, big issue. So when we plan our future and we think in Checkpoint, what do we need to do in order to fix that? What do we need to improve in our world? We are asking ourselves the question, why? And we came up with, I mean, of course, there's many, many reasons. And the number one is that there's a lot to attack and there's a lot of uh, bad people there. But we need to understand how, when we invest more, how can we get the result and how can we block these threats? And we came up with three key reasons. One is what I call the detection mentality. And I'll speak more about it later. I think that's the number one issue. I mean, we've heard here a lot of smart people speak about data collection, data analysis, detecting different threats. This is all very, very important. This is all very important as long as we can take it and actually block the attackers. And that's the number one issue. And if in the physical world we have time, we can collect intelligence, we can process it, and we can run faster than the bad guys, and we can send our policemen or... Uh, or um, armies in order to fight the bad guys. In cyberspace, we have no time. Think about it like we're trying to protect. I mean, in the traditional uh, with, um, defense, we can sometimes have days. When we talk about missiles, we have minutes or sometimes seconds. In cyber, we have zero time to react because the damage can be right here, right now. And when we look at the different challenges, the number one is what generation are we fighting? So. Let me give you a quick introduction. Today we are facing the fifth generation of cyber attacks. I think you all know the history of cyber. The first generation was 
computer viruses, and then came the antivirus. Later, uh, hackers found out that they can hack systems or, or cause damage by accessing from the network. That's where we got involved, and that's where the firewall was invented. Attackers will never sit still and didn't sit still, so the next generation was about finding vulnerabilities in apps that are allowed access to the network, and that's still where we are, I mean, that still exist, it's still there, by the way, all of them exist, and there were systems like intrusion prevention, again, started with detection and moved to prevention, moved on, and then hackers became even more sophisticated and moved to the fourth generation of attacks, which, are, which is a polymorphic content which we need, which are much harder to identify using what we know about the past, and we need to deploy much more sophisticated methods like behavioral analysis. But that's still the fourth generation, and we are facing today the fifth generation cyber attacks. When you can take all these elements and multiply them by few factors of sophistication. And everything is vulnerable. We can see here just last year, we've seen almost 17,000 new vulnerabilities that were found. That's more than double than two years earlier. All our infrastructure is suspicious to that. We talk about our mobile devices that are spying on us or know about us. Everything we know 24-7, we think they are secure. You can see last year over 700 vulnerabilities to a day were found in the mobile operating system. And our cloud infrastructure, when many things are moving, is maybe the weakest link. And not just because the cloud is bad, actually the cloud companies and the mobile companies are doing their best to secure this infrastructure because inherently it's interconnected. Every cloud app that we have is connected on average to about 15 other applications and the vulnerability in the subsector of any one of them can lead to full penetration to our infrastructure. And the attackers do take care of that. Do so, large-scale attacks, and we heard about Sony here, which is a good example of an attack like that. Attacks that can be large-scale, attacks that are multi-vector, they would come to us through an innocent app, through our mobile phone, steal our credentials from the cloud, and use that to penetrate our network, and we will know that the bad thing is happening only at the fourth stage. And in many cases, are using technologies that are developed by the best forces, in many cases developed in commercial grade and even government grade attack tools, not that I'm talking about protecting ourselves against our own governments, but these technologies at the end find themselves to the hand of the bad guys and we need to defend ourselves. What's the challenge here? If we look at that map of different generation of attacks and where we are, most enterprises today are still at the third generation of protection. The average protection level is 2.8. Only 3% of enterprises actually think that they are protecting themselves against the fifth generation of cyber attacks. So this is definitely a major issue that we have to face and we need to step forward. And last and not least, if we ask ourselves how to protect against that, what do we need to do? Look at this map, I won't read you, but there is about 18 sectors. Each sector has three subsectors. Each free subsector, each subsector has plenty of companies. I think it's really, really difficult to go into all that map and to almost 3,000 security vendors and try and actually understand what technologies we need to do. So we have too many different solutions, too much complexity. Solutions don't speak to each other. Maybe I'll demonstrate it with one more slide and then I'll go to three brief slides about my advice, what to do with it. If we look at the complexity, we know, and I think we talked about earlier, one of the major attack vectors is a bad file we receive. That was true 30 years ago with viruses, that's still true today. What do we need to do? This file can come to us at least in nine different ways, nine different attack vectors. So we need to protect all of those. Again, it can come from our email, it can come from a file server, it can come to our mobile device. Uh, there's at least eight different technologies actually many, many more that, can be, that need to be used in order to find that malware. And if we look at that matrix, there is 72 combinations that we need to protect just to protect this single file. And I see that many people raise the phone, it's a good one, but look at the broader picture. If we need to defend everything on the enterprise, we will have 16 attack vectors, 26 different technologies, that's just what we have in Checkpoint. If you need to take that map, and that, by the way, grows. So if in three years we add one more technology every year, 
and one more attack vector, the complexity is 800 different combinations. Now, if there's a lot of people here that are cyber experts. If you can figure that out, you must be really, really smart. And maybe I'll lose my last two minutes to say, okay, so how do we solve it? We have complex, how do we address that trend? And I can speak for an hour of that, and in Checkpoint we have, uh, again, 5,000 people focused on solving this solution, but I'll try to do it in one minute, say what do you need to focus if you really want to solve this problem, and it's three principles. Stepping up to the Gen 5, consolidation and prevention. And one sentence about all of that, I already spoke about the need to use technologies that are in the fifth generation. If you have a firewall, use the advanced capabilities and make sure you buy one that has Gen 5. If you use an endpoint system, same thing. You need to protect against all the first four generations, but you need to enable all the Gen 5 protections. And that's true in every part of the way. Second, there is a huge number of companies and great innovation, a lot of good people finding new things. You can't build that solution by looking at 3,000 vendor map, finding the 20, 30, 40, or 15 that you like. You need to build an architecture that's based on single architecture, few additional technologies, few specialized technologies that are needed by you, but you need to consolidate, you need to simplify. That's the number one rule, moving to that architecture. And I'll show you maybe some of it, how it's done. If you look at this example in our Infinity architecture, for example, if we detect a threat, and we, as I said, we process 86 billion transactions, four million of them are new files that weren't seen before, 7,000 every day are zero-day attacks that we know weren't been caught by any other system and weren't known before. Once we find the file and once we find all the indicator, immediately all the attack vectors can recognize that and can address it. The next time any of the indicator that was on this file, a server, a file like that or so on, comes to our mobile, to our server, to our network, it will be blocked immediately. And that's how you build something like that. And last and not least, as I mentioned before, huge energy is spent today in our world by the tech companies, by the customers, in building systems that detect attack. If I look at investments in new technology, about 80% of them is new capabilities for detecting attacks. This is important, but this is wrong. We need to shift our priorities, and we need to move to focus on prevention. 80 or 90% of our resources should be about technologies that act and act immediately and simply block the hacker out. The 170 days you spoke about earlier on detection, that's where the damage happened. We need to be able to block the attack before it occurs, and that's how we will reduce our risk surface, and that's how we will block them. So the main focus is focusing most of our energy on prevention and the rest of it on analyzing, processing, knowing what's happened, which is also important, but that should be the minority of the investment. So, if I need to summarize that, and I think we need to skip here, uh, both due to the interest of time and uh, uh, skip some of the new technologies and new ideas that we have, I think the bottom line that we have, first, this is an interesting look, I'll talk about this slide anyway, this is a look about the future, about the sixth generation security architecture, when we actually shift a lot of security decision making to an AI-based cloud, and then we power using nano agent all the different constituents that connect to the network, um, and really are able to provide the real-time prevention everywhere um, at all times. And if we look at how our connected world will look like, it will look like that, we'll have all these nano agents that secure every app, every car, every uh, a utility a factory, every industrial company, all connected and all secure in real time against all the workloads that we have today. So, to summarize, I think it really boils down to three simple principles. Step up to Gen 5, use the latest protection. We need to protect ourselves against these uh, polymorphic, aggressive, multi-vector attacks consolidate, focus on simplicity, on a unified architecture, 
And last and not least, I think that's the most important, spend most of your energy on prevention. You can't rely on human beings that will be faster than the bots and the machines. We are fighting machines. We need to be able to have our electronic warfare that will fight that automatically and will prevent the damage before it happens. Thank you very much. Really appreciate all your time. Enjoy the rest of the conference.